Pai, what are you saying? Yes, for your key, we give thanks for life again as usual, you know? Fire serious you things, do. serious thing. We are here again, Ballhead and the Dread. As you can see, I found one of my favorite scars. My raging <laughs> father, Lutz, respects it. <laughs> Lutz gave me this years ago. And I was going through some stuff. I saw, you know, when you got kids and you put stuff so. I was going through something. I saw it curled up. I said, BC. So the vibes go. So I said, I'm going to wear it today. This scarf I wear every day. Yeah, but I'm start sweating. If I start sweating, I'm going to take it off. Um, all right. What do I want to say before? Oh, listen, people, uh, people tune in. First of all, we give thanks for all the support uh, we've been getting, right? So we truly appreciate that. And also, um, if you get free time, we have some Ivory Reasons there on I Never Knew TV. Brand new reasons from the ancient profi Muda Baruka there blazing the fire. We have a du- a doula on there. Uh Mama Aman, very informative. Dr. Knife is back with the word sound. Paula Herlock. Um, Dr. Doc coming up. Therapist there. Who else we have there? Sister P. Freddie McGregor reason. Enough things there. Make sure you check it out. Also, live performances from Shantdown, Baltimore. Uh, or available now. Check for our idea, Blazing the Fire there in Baltimore, musically inclined. Far right, what are we reasoning about today? Yeah, the reasoning that today is a, is a serious one. Is that one that we're going to talk about now? The falling of the witch, you know? <laughs> well, <laughs> so, uh, well, you know, as most people would be aware you now, them say Queen, Queen Elizabeth II has fallen. You know, so we want to talk about the impact of, of, of Queen Elizabeth II and the supposed British royalty, you know. I always see a lot of black people, a lot of oppressed people who are really um, mourn over the oppressor itself. So it's really a deep discussion and it, and it runs very, very deep for you know, too. So make a reason about it, you know. All right, now. So, <laughs> you, know, you know, a couple of things. I only think we start on you know, but something we really, really want people to understand. Say, in this modern day, so because neocolonialism makes things seem like slavery is a thing of the past and um, oppression is a thing of the past, a lot of people don't get it. So a lot of people see these things as like, them see it as like a movie, so to speak, or some form of action, ad, action adventure type of thing. And don't realize that the same royal family where them speak of, are the same exact family where they that rule throughout the time of the actual slavery and make most of these things happen, oppressions happen to, towards our ancestors. So a lot of people now are telling me, I'm sip on the internet and say, um, rest in peace and all of these things. But I can tell you straightforward, there is no resting in peace for the wicked. Because Queen Elizabeth II and fair family, the amount of atrocity where them put upon mankind, and especially black people, there is no resting in peace for any, any, any at all towards that witch. And I said that unapologetically. So you see, I said, I know a lot of people might feel offended by that and feel like it's some form of punter or something like that. But we said that with a very, very serious, serious face, with serious intention, and we have a lot of different reasons for say that. And far, I just want to clear up, because you made, you, made, you made a great point, right? A lot of times when people think about... Uh, atrocities of empires specifically uh people in america they automatically go to slavery right and i just want to make it clear their wickedness go way farther than slavery and more modern too that's the next thing a lot of people think when we think about atrocities and like genocide and all this they think this some thousand years ago no these things were less than 50 60 years ago because Run it down right now. Oh, one thing before we even get to the breakdown of the things they have done under the reign of the queen. I know some people argue she don't have no power. Some people have say power. She did her same way and never said a word and benefited from it financially because they're always taking resources. But before we even get into that, I wanted to talk about, I forgot the bridge that said it. I don't know if it's John Henry Clark or Franz Fanon or many, many people have said this. I don't know the originator of the term, but we do have to remember um, the oppressed wanting all the things of the oppressor. And I think that's what we see in the sense that, one, in our culture, we have this uh, fascination with monarchy, right, with royalty. That goes down starting from the Disney movie straight to modern times. Um, and also people just praise whiteness. People praise European country. And the queen is the height of European country. She's the, symbol, she's the highest symbol of a European monarchy. And I will defend our people on this for a little bit before we lick the fire, right? 
It's a lot of ignorance that goes into it. And there's a lot of willing, willing ignorance. I'm not even sure that's a term, but they don't want to know. One, they don't know and they don't want to know. And even if they did, much like my Christian virgin and sister, they would be in denial and be in defense of the person that's oppressing them. So I just want to clear that air before we get into atrocities, right? But for those unaware, let's give you the rundown of how these people get down, right? So let's start with Atlantic slave trade, which they played a uh, immense part. They have a whole industry and a whole area of their country that was developed specifically to benefit from slavery, right? We're not going to go into a deep history lesson here. We'll give you the, what do you want? We, we'll give them the uh, the main point <laughs> in themselves. We'll have to go into research, right? Mash down Australia. Australia, you had, <laughs> you had indigenous people there. Many of them do no, no longer exist. Look into that. Hey, Fire, before we even get to Africa, I want to speak about India, yeah. Right, because to me, that's one of their top five actions. The people go into India, right? India has food enough to supply the people. After they go into India now, the people are are taking the food that's grown in India to England, right? And have a man manufactured famine. There is no reason to have people there suffering from hunger fire when there's enough food and resources there. And Indians, and, and, and people don't talk about Indians enough. We always talk about Black people with bleaching in this. Indian people bleach fight. They got a real insecurity complex after colonialism. They don't want anything to do with dark skin. They really want to mimic that European vibe. We have China, which we can get into later. Kenya is a terrible situation. We have Burma there. We have, we already said Australia. South Africa to their own people with the Boers fire. That's the next thing I want to clarify. It's not always brown and tan people they're dealing with. It's their own people they deal with wicked a lot of times. Fire, which one I'm missing now? We said Nigeria. We have Kenya, which is a big one. Yeah, remember, Those remember Barbados. <laughs> Malaysia. Yeah, Malaysia. Remember, remember that fire. You can't, you, you can't. There's always countries where you're going to miss fire. The, the, the British, remember that the saying goes, you know, the British, the sun never sets on the British Empire. And if the sun never sets on the British Empire, in the north, in the east, in the south, in the west, Britain put terror towards any particular nation where you can think about. Whether that nation today is a colonial nation <clears throat> or that nation is a nation with an anti-colonial nation, Britain did play a role in it. And you see, towards this India thing now, I think the, the company where them did farm to is called the British Indian, British, the British yeah, Indian, the Indian Company. Yeah. In, Indian Company. But I in particular, if we are thinking about the wars, them because I know food alone, you know, I want to tell us the main things where the man them steal from India in particular is, is the diamond them. Mm. Some of the diamond them, some of, because the particular wars, I think them called the Anglo Sikh war, and there were like two to three versions of the Anglo Sikh war where the Britain come in, this place, you know, India have one of the biggest population, um, India and China has two, some, two of the biggest population. The amount of displacement of families in India with the man them cars and make that disrupt the flow of things towards the eastern region of the world. It's not a normal thing. And far, and, didn't they use utilize them a lot for manpower when they went to other places to um in regards to yeah. engaging? Yeah. Enough of them never really built for that too at the same time too. So if you check it now, are millions, millions upon millions of man them kill. I want to talk about kill, and people might hear about millions dead, and they might say, Oh, over thousands of years. No. In the space of six months, the man them displaced and killed millions of people from the particular side of India. And then when the man them come now, you know, say, funny enough, the, 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 the majority of the treasures them where the man them have today and the biggest diamond, what them call the biggest diamond, Kohinoor, Kohinoor, Kohinoor is a, a, is a mean, anybody Google, Google that or check out that, Kohinoor are the main diamond where the man them steal from India and them steal it from a, a little prince. One of the small Sikh prints, them. I think that name was Singh. And when the man them steal that now, the man them bring that guy to England and make that become the spotlight and the headline diamond of the world for compete with the diamonds, them, where them would have take following um, years outside of Africa. And now the man them have them things up on display. And if I want enough people out there tell me, say the queen did I try right enough for the wrongs of her family. Garbage. We're getting at that even further. But I want to tell you, say, the crown, the main crown, where Queen Elizabeth II, the weir, have that same exact 
Diamond from the Anglo Sequoir. I think that was the second Anglo Sequoir in our about 1849, if I'm not mistaken. This exact big diamond, the fair thing, the, diamond, the, the crown which I have, um, it have like over 2,000 diamonds on it. But the main one was from that same Anglo Sequoir. So you tell me, so now that passed on from generation to generation of that stolen artifact, that stolen thing from the people in culture. And then she actually write the wrongs. And she but how the fire and things. But oh, get into that because <laughs> I hear that all the time, right? Because even um, I'm not sure if I'm quoting this properly, so please correct me, right? But I remember reading something where, um, I think it had to do with Jamaica, I believe, in regards to the uh, it was Jamaica, one of these countries, uh, where the apology was um, something to do fire with God allowed it. Did you ever hear that one yet? Because God allowed it. That was it. original. That yeah, was the original because, statement. Because God allowed it. Um, it wasn't considered an immoral act. Um, that was pretty wacky. Um, in regards to reparations, I know the hustle many European countries do, if they ever do, they don't use the word reparations. They use the word, um, I guess they say something about some acknowledgement, but it really comes back to aid, which is usually tied to some type of loan. That's not, people crazy yeah but the, the the thing is is that the ignorance of the people and the lack of uh access to information or wanting i have to keep putting that out there wanting to because there's no effort in regards to wanting to know information so we have to acknowledge that um it just leaves them in a position where you behave in a way i wonder if these people see black people and just laugh at them fire you get what i'm saying and just like first of all i know that 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 monarchy mind frame they don't view the average person as a full human being He'd be more of a, As a uh, subject. Yeah, a subject or a peasant. But I wonder, like, you know, um, I think you brought to my attention Jamaica. I guess they're celebrating for or mourning, that is. They're mourning the queen for 12 years. I mean, 12 days. It's a symbol Jamaica. of the commonwealth. <laughs> symbol yeah, right? of, the, of the whole commonwealth thing for 12 days of mourning. Yeah, and it's just like the fact that, you know, just in, in, in regular society, you hear a lot of, you just hear, you know, when news happens, you hear a lot of whispers, and I'm just taking it in, like, but at the same token, trying to be on the higher heights, I understand that there's a high level of ignorance that plays a role in regards to this. You know, so I'll keep repeating that throughout and hopefully someone uh, listening has the initiative to be more informed because the more informed you are, you'll make better decisions and you won't partake in actions that probably shouldn't be partaking in. You shouldn't be praising certain people with such a history of evil fire. People probably don't want to hear this, right? But it is what it is. Whenever we hear about atrocities in Europe, we always hear about Hitler. That's all we hear is Hitler fire, right? Yes, Hitler put in some different type of work. Don't get it twisted, right? But Hitler not the only man with concentration camp. And we need to, we need to just say he had a certain type. He may have had a gas chamber, but a concentration camp is a concentration camp. And Europe are very skilled at concentration camps. They have a great history of concentration camps. One of the most sickening books when I was icing up certain things. I know it's not an England thing, but it benefited indirect. The British and King Leopold in Congo. But fire, what went down? What do I mean on an England thing? After the idol, Hold on. Like, okay, no, I, I said, the connection. <laughs> no, no, I said it, they benefited indirectly. But, you know, but check this. The experience of the Kukuya people there in Kenya fire. That's one of the things I can say. That's one of the things I really read that really sick in my stomach fire. And I read some dark things, but the experience of those people, not to disregard other people's experience, because I know, but this is not human beings that fight. It's not, I, I, you know, I had to all question mankind figuring this is a, a human being conducting themselves like this. You get what I'm saying? To deal with people like this on a whole. That's the thing I question sometimes in regards to like, is it one mankind or is it different grades of human beings with different frequencies? And that's where I got the original thought after reading that story. Anybody interested, check out uh, the experience of Mau Mau Rebellion. Um, what do they call it? Land of the Free? What do they call it? People Land of the Free? What's the Land and Freedom Army. La Land and Free Freedom Army. And my brother, you know, uh, um, Denim Kamathi, Phil Marshall. But read about that fire. And that really gives the heights of the behavior of the English, the British Empire. China, opium fire. Whole place gone. Go ahead, Farah. 
No, me I said they, they, you know, and they touch the mama uprising vibration, then don't really get enough of them expound, expound upon that a little, you know, because you see it, how terribly it, all right. So the history of, of England and Kenya is this, so like 1920. I know them, them, them been occupying Africa from, from them split up Africa at the Berlin Conference at 1884 and 1885, England decides, say, um, them are going to make that run towards that particular side of East Africa because them didn't want to get out, um, get out Germany. All right. Outside of that. All right. Sorry to cut you. We just got to add yeah. one thing for people unfamiliar mm-hmm. with this, right? People have to understand in regards to Africa, the landscape is manufactured. These are not natural borders and barriers. So when they just cut up these places, they put people that may not necessarily deal with each other or also share similar cultures, languages, practices, religions together purposefully. So there's no such thing as like a Nigeria, these places. These are all, I just want to clear up that part for those unaware. Sorry, Farah. Yeah, different kingdoms. Are those different kingdoms? The man, them have, and them have them one, them one vast land and different kingdoms within that. And then these barbaric people, individuals you now, they decide to them just go spit up this thing with a knife you now, like a piece of cake. And I'm going to spit up Africa. And I'm going to take right to stand without African people. And just going to live them life. And they've never a clue what take place now. So England come in now and officially, 1920, them farm the colony of uh, 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 Kenya. And then, then uh, automatically, them start work on a railroad. And all of the longest railroad where the cars bring a whole heap of money. So they want to connect Mombasa to Kisumu and whole heap of them thing. So through this, this colonization now, them decide say, them decide say, them are going to displace millions of people again. So there's so much displacement, um, the, British, the British people them come in. And this was a direct order, you know, because in 1920, I think a King George the fourth, I think a King George the fourth was, was, was the man who did, a, who did a rule at the time that a Queen Elizabeth was grandfather. Uh, yeah, I think her grandfather that seen Queen Elizabeth II, because you have Queen Elizabeth I who was our mother. So during two, our father, sorry, not, not, our, not our grandfather, our father. So much wickedness, me have had check the line. <laughs> yeah, them decide, say, no, them are going to do that and displace some amount of people now. So officially, it's not just the Kikuyu people need, you know, just so the Kikuyu people, them are the one that known for be the warrior type. So them displace the Maasai, them displace the Nandi. And all of these people, there is no, the people them have them land, them have everything developed, them they have a full ecosystem going, and yet still, the royal, supposed royal family of Britain, displace these people, and kill a whole heap of them right off the top, I and mean, not talk about witness resistance, you know, normally, when the Europeans come in and them get a resistance, them start kill off a whole heap of people, them killings there, where the, where the British them carry out under this supposed royal family, the man them slaughter a couple of people in about the space around three weeks. Them have um, more than 2,000 2, deaths. I mean, I thought about millions of displacement where it go on. Them have 2,000 deaths without resistance, you know. And that's one of the things where most people don't overstand, say. That's one of the build up will lead towards the Mama Uprising. Because the Mama Uprising never really took place until 1953, you know. And if you check it, Queen Elizabeth II come into prominence in 1952. She started reigning in 1952. So all them tell me about this right wrongs. Come on, we could talk about this now. This is a direct thing. We know the royal family have, have a it's long history of doing evil, you know. The heights are evil. But 1953, when the Mama uprising take place, and they have, as what they said, the concentration camp, the main one was Hola Camp. And if a people can go check that particular one, the most dangerous, dangerous touch of one at the Hola Camp. So you see. This is 1953 when this uprising take place. She was the direct commander who would give this order and the state of emergency, what them call in a part in a Kenya in particular in 1953, if you got hurt and kill and murder and plunder all of the Mama people, them the, the Kikuyu people them in particular, because them was the warriors, them arise up as they are under the tutelage of the Dan Kimati. She was the one who would give the direct order to carry out all the torture all the killings, all of this thing, all of the plunder of these particular people. So somebody tell me about that now, no, please, because I want to overstand it. This is no indirect thing we're passed down through lineage now, you know. We're talking about direct command. We're talking about Henry Pattinger and all of these people. That came from the royal 
court and it was signed by the royal court for torture and kill all of these Kikuya people and, and torture them in the other camp, all of these different other camp. As we said, London Freedom Army did a fight back and try to get themselves out of the colonization. So where is the right enough of the wrongs where all of these um, ignorant and stupid people where support oppression I got to tell them about now? Then I think, <laughs> and I want to clear up too, this is something that I was very, very got into, right? So I want to recommend a couple books for the people. This one here is a very good one, right? So you can see it. Excellent book right here. All dealing with Kenya. Excellent book again. And this one here, fire. this the one. This the one right here. <laughs> because a lot of times when these things take place, they act like, oh, there was no correspondence. We don't know what's going on. No, fire. It, it, is doc it is documented. It is clearly documented that numerous people who were there said, yo, this thing, soldiers, British soldiers, because you know they what they do is um they take uh Kenyan military, turn them against their own people. I'm talking about British soldiers. The thing was so sick and said, this can't work, fire. And gave correspondences back and it's documented that the Queen of England also is aware or was aware of what took place. We killing, <laughs> we, we killing elderly people, children. There's one instance within this book, a situation where um, uh, during the concentration camp, they released to modify the, uh, their access to food. Um, there was a situation numerous times. Uh, soldiers spoke about where uh, the child, the woman, they had to work with the child on the back. The child died, fire. Child's dead, and they and she had to continue working. How sick business is this fire? That one soldier there, all crazy. The man, like around his compound, he had nothing but heads up on the gates. Sick individual fire, rotten in heads, just sitting there. People had each chop off for no reason. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? For no reason that that chopping off people heads. And this is not. I want to clear. This is not a thousand years ago, fire eye. That's what we need to clear up. What are we dealing with? 70, 70 to 60 years ago, these yeah, things took place. The tree that, mm -hmm. While my sister was in power, my my sister got correspondence saying all the, the sick behaviors that was taking place. And people don't understand the importance of displaced people. Fire. When you got landless people, it become a serious situation. From an economic standpoint, from a spiritual standpoint, from a mental standpoint, a psychological standpoint. You have a certain ecosystem that you that's in your bloodline that you're used to the way you're living. Now you have no land. Then they try to sell. <laughs> but I think the slums, the 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 the, the Kibera slums. I, I feel just get a little touch, a little point on that as there you say. It's a direct thing. The Kibera slums where they in a Nairobi, you know, kind of Nairobi have a wallop of millions of people as a city. These slums, these slums were farmed. As a result of that taking place, because I will kick with your people in, in, a, in a Kibera, Kenyan people, they can tell you. I will that. There. So the displacement is a direct thing, and, kick with, and, and, and the, the, the Kibera. Kibera is the second biggest slum in Africa, I think, next to Soweto in South Africa. And even that, too, the displacement itself of the people in Azania lead towards the, 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 the slum of Soweto. So you see, but, direct, the direct result of ghettos in Africa. Is a cause of the same so called royal family with the man them talk about. But far right. We can't see it today. But far right. This, any, hey, if you displace people from their land that they own, that was already built up, right? Then now, a certain portion of that group, you're not going to give any employment to. So let's just be clear about that. So you have a group of people who are landless and unemployed that were previously owners and had a living and a pride because it's a sense of pride to go work and generate and provide for your family we don't think about all these things how this disrupts everything for you're a man now you can't provide for your family people there raping your wife and kids you can't do nothing about it all your brethren dead there's and this there's no one to run to it's not like you go into the police station people don't understand the fear and terror these people have to live with then now when they build up the thing and try to uh what do you want to say integrate people back into this society the jobs that they give you are not enough. And they're trying to sell you land that you could never afford. So therefore, where the economic slavery come into play. But I think we don't we don't acknowledge the the mental and spiritual torment people have to deal with dealing with these people. So much that they want to be them now. 
if they do get a position, right, they're harsher to their brethren and sisters than what these people did to them. So it's a sick cycle. It's a very sick cycle. It's a very sick cycle. And while we're still on Africa, right, I just want to recommend this book here because YouTube not going to educate you. Fine. No disrespect to YouTube, but I get this vibe where people just going to listen to people. Yes, people are giving good information, but it's good to read well-researched books. Farah, I know this one's going to make you smile. This is an excellent book right here. Fire. You see this man here? A terrible man. If you can look deep into the book in the background, my bridge your hand chops off. All your good year tearing all that. Yeah, uh, rubber sack. Yeah, that robot. <laughs> this bridge in here, right? Chopping off people's hands. If you don't meet your quota for the day, they're chopping off hands. That's why people walking around there with half an arm and half a hand, right? And one more I want to recommend. <clears throat> and when you talk next, I get some more. Oh, the people can't see it. So I apologize. I'm figuring the people watching, but for the people hearing, I'm going to put all the books. This book here, The Last Empire, The Beers, Diamonds, right? On oh, Wicked People Fire. And this is the origin of the whole. Uh, engagement ring and marriage ring and all these things. But this is a terrible story. See these people back here? Road scholars, <laughs> Cecil Rose fire. Not an easy brethren. Keep brethren to the one queen. So, um, all right, it's just this whole experience, this whole response really highlights. It's ignorance, fight. I don't know what I don't know what to say. It is a people's lack of information. That's all it is. And like not clearly having a clear understanding of who your enemy is. This I just think this is what this is this is what this whole experience does, right? It is clearly demonstrated. And I'm not saying all European people, I'm talking about the Queen of England fight. We're talking about the the the, the British Empire, right? You are praising people. You do it. They also do it in the black community too. Um, these people that we praise that are detrimental. If you're praising the drug dealer or you're praising some artist or something that's pumping out a sound that's corrupting the youth and corrupting the minds. People don't, us as black people, fire, we really struggle with identifying who is not for you. And we want to mimic their behaviors. Then this is the next thing we want to defend because <clears throat> the vibe I got, I'm just sitting there observing like when it, for when it dropped, like whatever time the chick died and everybody talking about it. But I was just observing, but it's like, they give me a church vibe. It's like a situation where you have a pastor that's uh, publicly acknowledged for like a raping a boy or something. You're sitting to defend this man. Like, why are you, church vibes, man. Um, why are you, why are you, first of all, why are you defending someone that's not even the head of your own country? That's the next thing. It's not like you've been to England or something or you benefited of anything. That's the, What have you benefited? How has the empire benefited you? More than tabloid stories because <clears throat> I know, I don't know the full story. I don't know the sister name, but I know a son married a girl. I think maybe she's half black or something. So I guess that's that was some advancement for black people or something or something took place. I'm not sure, but I know it was a big story at the time. I know it was like a lot of talk about the son or the grandson and the girl, right? Pointless stories. It has nothing to do with you. I don't see how it's benefiting you. I don't see, I don't, I don't think she's persuading them to do anything that's gonna benefit black people. So like I I don't I don't get all this, but it's just, and maybe there's a a, a undertone from a different perspective of this whole worship of monarchy that comes from childhood stories. You know, maybe, maybe that's just the issue. People are just uh, program to worship queens and disregard what they do and focus on one aspect. So it's like, it's like, it's like you have a door here, right? She's always in front of this door, but behind the door is like the whole reality, you know. And you can get behind the door if you want to. <laughs> you just don't want to look. You get what I'm saying? Because man, they got a long history. Anyone listening, check out. As you said, Malaysia, China, India, very interesting fire, Kenya. South Africa with the Boers, right? And Boers are white people from England, right? Where are the Boers from? And I'm not sure to remember, though. Can't remember. You're not from Africa, I tell, you, I tell you that some, much. Some European connection, though. Oh, Ireland. Can't leave out Ireland, right? That's the next thing. 
Man, yeah, me, think, me, me, me personally feel if I talk about the atrocity away, away. I know mean, somebody named them alone we can call because we feel like every single nation. It's no, like, some of them fire, some of them kind of on the heights more than others. More though. than some. Well, you know, the and the one the ones we talk about is some serious, like China's a serious situation. India's a serious situation. Australia's just fire, even a, hey, people don't even always this. Look, check out America, right? Somebody in the send a text, I don't know, not text message. Do you have an indigenous person that works on your job? You don't. You don't see them in basic society. They're gone. They're on they're on little encampments. You want to call a reservation, right? And they're really suffering, but like they're they're basically gone. There's no such thing as a Taino, a Carib, or Arawak. They're gone. They don't exist on earth. The indigenous people there in Australia, they're basically gone. Like they're not far right. They're not here. They're not on Earth. It's a, a species, a race, whatever you want to call them, they don't exist. They have totally disrupted cultures. You can't kill most of the men in a particular culture and expect them to bounce back in 50, 70 years. Then they're putting out all this information and reports like the people backwards. So how do people backwards? They've been living good for thousands, hundreds and thousands of years. So how are they backwards? They're backwards because everybody's dead. You took their land. And the resources that is, was meant to feed them has now gone to Europe. Africa feeds Europe. South America, Caribbean, other places feeds America. That's how it works. Well, the part, the, it kind of it it strange to say that, you know, because I want to say, big two to the, where I talk about Commonwealth, which we can expound upon that, expound upon that afterwards, because me in particular feel like say the common through the Commonwealth, the Caribbean and all of these particular regions still are feed Europe directly. But before me, before we even get there, so I, 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 I mentioned about Leopold, I, and if I get to say what I say about that, the connection to the royal family is that you see the Duke of Cambridge and the Duchess, Duchess of Essex, too, I think. So through the lineage of that, Elizabeth I and Leopold was supposed to be like around second, second to third cousin, you know. So it's the same for actual family. Bloodline. For same exact bloodline, you know. So King Leopold II, you hear him name Leopold II. So the Belgium connection is the same spin-off of the British monarchy. So the Belgium monarchy is the same exact monarchy. It's just an extension outside of England and Wales. So I really want people for overstand that say King Leopold, we hear what talk about King Leopold, a man who was 10 times more dangerous than, than Hitler, oh, is yeah. also is also the family of the supposed royal royal um people in uh, England. You see me I say? And then if we're gonna think about, about the connection uh, and how, how the people them still uh, feed um Europe and uh, feel this feed the supposed royal family. We mentioned the Commonwealth, which is Commonwealth is just an association with 56 different countries who them say supposed to have, have the same interests post-colonialism, post, post <laughs> who are supposed countries where England, England used to rule, but now they have the same interests to develop the country economically and invest in the country and make sure it's the thing tight. But fire, come on, 56 countries, they're in the Commonwealth. When I see the countries them where supposedly are first, how can you have the same con the countries with yeah, yeah, Commonwealth have one interest? How can you have countries where you classify as developing nations within this particular organization and could develop countries and yet still tell them, say them have the same interest? And then on top of that, the Commonwealth release speech say the, the Queen car from 19, I know 1947, even before she get the, the car that coronation take place, she was the one who really responds for the development of the Commonwealth itself. That was her assignment. Queen Elizabeth II, that was her assignment. How can you tell me that the same interest of Jamaica is the same interest of England? The same interest of England is the same interest of Australia. The same interest of England is the same interest of other particular small islands and all of these countries where get rampaged by the IMF, get rampaged by no, the world. Sense. Bank, Fire, it makes great sense. How? Oh. The make, interest is the same. It makes great it, sense. The interest is England. That is the, <laughs> that's the only interest, right? <laughs> that's the only interest. You get what I'm saying? You know, but 
All right, all we, all we could do is I'm gonna put the list of the books in the uh, description for those who couldn't see the video. But we just ask that people just be more knowledgeable, right? This ignorance thing is not good, you know. Me. And if you are reading, we give things. If you're just reading like uh, fictional books and all that, uh, well, first of all, I'm just glad that you're reading. Period, right? But we do ask that you shift more over because it's not a history thing in the sense that you're living in the past. So that's not what we're promoting. You get what I'm saying? You have to be aware of what's going on now, how to function in society, but you have to understand that to have a clearer understanding and also to uh, weave through misinformation, specifically because uh, who controls history? So, for instance, this book here should be a, a guaranteed college read at every university for arts, you know, or these books for history. I learned all these things after the fact. I never learned about none of these things here. You have a history book and all that's left out. How do these countries generate their wealth year after year, decade after decade, century after century? Who's losing for them to win? Why is this country the way it is? People aren't just backwards. Right? It doesn't work like that. And unfortunately, the people who say others are backwards are the backwards ones. We live in an unsustainable society. These people have been doing their thing for a very long time. So we'll see at the end <laughs> who's still around by it. You know, like we have to, we have to just, I think we have to just have a, a different uh, definition for indigenous, you know, for ancient and all that, because not that ancient, maybe ancient in time, you know, but the idea is very uh, progressive. We're, we're very backwards. I will say that. And we who grew up in these places adopt these behaviors and you have to unlearn them and grow out of them. I grew up in a capitalistic society. So yes, I was I was uh flooded with these ideas and I had to 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 right the wrong in a sense. You have to knowledge like this thing can't work. Especially when it comes to your perception of Africans in their current state. You have to understand why. Why are they like this? How did this they get here? Not to say, you know, there are little factors where they play the role, but we have to understand like the country itself was destabilized, right? It took think about this. You have your house, right? Somebody just take your house and you on the street. Then they put you in an encampment for three years without proper nutrition. You're exposed to all type of violence. Your family separated. You don't know where your child is. You don't know where the lady is. The lady's probably dead. Then when they let you out now, fire, it, there's no work. So how are you supposed to bounce back from that? And half the people did anyway. Or others left the country. You have brain drain and you have death. Then you have the continuous brain drain because there's no opportun opportunity. So anyone who does have skills or, or, or can contribute to the benefit of the country, they leave because it's like, what's, what's, what's the point of staying here? There's no opportunities. Let me go to the mother country. That's the next reason if I am. The origin of brain drain. We, we, we mentioned brain drain. We, criti we criticize brain drain, but we never speak about the origins of brain drain or countries. Why people leave. How did the country get to that state that they can't uh, provide uh, certain incomes to those who have certain abilities? For the, for the, ex, for the example where they are, it, I want people to look on it even, even deeper too because when time them people come out after being in these camps and seeing so much displacement take place, the country is still being ruled by these people who were the original oppressors. And if it's, if it's not being ruled directly, it's being ruled to an intermediary who is supposedly your president or your prime minister. Because remember, all of these countries are still directly in a constitution. It's still being owned by the king and by the queen. Jamaica is still is not an independent nation. Jamaica is being, there's a governor general who control the thing. So it's still the order of these people who control the whole thing overall. And then here's, here's something very, very important that we really want people to understand. I get it, people in my full education. Because all of this time, we're talking about these reparations, right? But let me show you something. I'm showing you something of psych. I'm showing you how psychology play a very, very important role. You know, so we as people, and even mega use of people in Britain, so even black people in Britain right now still appear the, the, the king and the queen and the royal family to enslave them. Yeah, when you hear that right, the people of Britain and around the world to other countries, but I'm just going to use one example. So in England, there is this thing called the Sovereign Act, right? So the Sovereign Act. 
is where is where taxpayers' money, yes, in this modern day and age, even in this modern day and age, taxpayers' money go towards the royal family. And it's done due to the sovereign act. See, so the sovereign act is, is something where there is a particular budget after budget where we're at millions of dollars. And this is supposed to cover the expenses of the royal family, supposed to cover the travels of the royal family. And it's also something like of a profit towards the royal family for do whatever they want to do. So if you think about it, after these people cause so much atrocities and make even, and, re, and after them, them said them abolish slavery, which is still strange, but them said them abolish slavery. Yet when them abolish that, them pay the, the, the planter class, them pay the, the slave owners reparation for losing property, right? So the slaves, them never get no form of reparations. And to this day, we as people are paying repar we we are paying them for the same loss of property because how can black people even think about it? People overall in England, but black people who have paid them tax in England have to make have, have a contribution or to feed them paycheck going towards the sovereign act, and the sovereign act is giving the royal family money because them people are wise enough. Hear what them do? Them do this thing um, by law where them surrender them revenue. So surrender the revenue that them did not make. Um, no, it becomes that they're not earning any particular funds um, as they as they were in the past. So when them surrender the revenue, no, them control. Them members say them live free you now. Them create the society. You now the prime minister and all of these different people have re reported them. Nothing can go out without for them particular order because that's that's how the government farm. We can't remember the exact um, name or the type of structure of government because they use a different type of government principle in a, than America. It's so like America, you have the House of Representatives, you have the Senate. Then I think it's called a unitary government, if my name is thing. Anybody from the Caribbean I would have fall familiar with that due to like, oh, you have House of Parliament and the, all the House of Parliament structured with all of these particular um, constituencies and all of that thing. That's the same structure we come from uh, England. But just to show you how bold these particular people are, that the man can have a act in this day and age. And the man upgraded the act 2011. Remember, we're not the year 2022 in a fire. 2022, we're not in a fire. Just 11 years ago, the man upgraded the act, uh, increased the budget for this sovereign act fire. Just to, to think about it, taxpayers' money. Because the average person, as well, I said, them think about this as they did say, them think about it as ancient and all these things. But now we are thinking about it in the modern era. So you know work your money every single day, a low income job regardless, because most of the people them are suffer anyways. And you know have money come out of your thing towards the sovereign act figure pay the royal family. And then on top of that, any one of them countries them would visit, especially if the country within the Commonwealth. All of these expenses come from the local government. So on top of that, remember the sovereign act already cover for them living and give them profit and give them all of these things for, for live free for a lifetime with millions on top of that from the normal subjects of the British, you know. And then the local government now um, obligated, any country them going are obligated to ensure that them taking care of to the extreme. So even a country like uh, Jamaica, which 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 either leaders like Al Andrew or Leso, I go follow this 12 day of mourning. So they never did mourn for the people them way with the gun violence where I go on to the country of 1600 and add murder a year. They never mourn for the little girl them and the little boy them where I get take away. They never mourn for nothing way moral, but them are mourn for, 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 for these witch and these murderers and people who plunder all over. And I want to tell you say, there I mention religion. And say it give a Christian vibe. Of course, it does give a Christian vibe because check these levels now. Remember, you know, if we talk about church and we talk about Christianity, you know, the concept of Christianity in a, any form of African people mind in a, this day and age are going to come from two particular places, if you want to think about it. It's going to come from either the, 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 the Vatican perspective, which is the Roman Catholic Church, or it is going to come from the perspective of the Anglican, which is the Church of England. And any particular denomination where practiced by black people today was more than likely spin off from the Church of England, Church of England, which is the Anglican Church, and it spin off also from the Roman Catholics. And I want to let's say combine, although these people are supposed to be friend enemy, because you know the freedom thing guard through the politics, them have different sections. More than what more than half of the world 
in this modern day age, yes, you got that, right? More than 50% of the world, land, per earth, you know, combined. When the Vatican City, the Roman Catholic, and the English combined, them own more than half of the earth fire. And that is owned through the premise of the church. So the diocese and the church itself are the owners of these land because the British never... Um, they, anytime them connect them wealth or them connect any form of earnings, them connect that particular to the church. There is no difference between the British monarchy and the church because the Church of England is responsible for carrying out the duties of the royal family as it is today. So, so it, of course, it's going to be a church fire because that is where, where it is. <laughs> And and now we give thanks for sharing that fire. And also, uh, people, if you research yourself, look at the role of the church in these things because it wasn't sitting there protecting nobody for it. So we just want to be clear about that, you know. So, uh, oh, one thing I want to add to what you said, uh, Protestant, everything is a break off of the Protestant church, right? Yeah, you break your Martin Luther that starts. So all these things we have, yeah, um, all of them, right? Protestant church, and everybody break off, break off, break off, break off, break off, you know, so... Um, you may think you're doing something different from the next person, but it's, it's from the same hub. It's like it's like a TV thing, like Disney own everything, you know? Like, oh, I, I don't watch the uh, History Channel, but I watch ESPN, but it's, it's the same thing. Fire, we give thanks. <laughs> we give thanks for the reasoning. We give thanks for everyone who tuned in. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully you're inspired to read and do more research. And I, I just want to clarify, yes, it's very important to... Uh, over his history i'm not asking you to be stuck in history i'm not asking you to just be obsessed with it but you have to clearly understand the strategies people use and what they do because they do the same thing over and over again names change uh, countries may change uh you know but it's the same strategy it's the same strategy and i don't know they mastered it because obviously it still works you know so um once again the books i'll put in the description make sure you check out ep from far right disrupting the status quo that link there is in the um description if you get free time check out the performances from chant down baltimore the benefit concert we did in june this year and um we are on the air every sunday 9 to 11 a.m playing some wicked music on wloi.org and check out the reasons there. We give thanks for everyone there supporting the movements from those times to now. And I just encourage you guys that you read ignorance is not bliss and stop worshiping people that are not beneficial to you. Right. Because um, it's just not good. <laughs> I don't know what else uh, to uh, say. Fire. Uh, fire. I want, I want a wicked piece of fire to perform if you get in it because we come coming with this with the intention, but through the reason I go on. This is a surprise I will leave a man to say the fire is uh, born, but we have to burn it. So we'll leave the man them with long locks and this thing opposed uh, 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 as Rasta, Rasta far right. We better stop it fire because a false perception will not give out the fire. So I go, I warn the item. Can I say I will leave one who claim to be Rasta far right who are send this R.I.P. thing to. And uh, they are send it in the name of the fox. Eh? Say, say, when Ayla Selassie did in exile in the day Kensington, Kensington Palace in England, and they say I'm exiled for five years. I want to them stop it because I feel like this education, especially amongst enough of these ones who are claimed to be far right, is, is, is really wicked. I want to them stop it because here what this thing now. I get there a quick brief history before we run out. So, the Napier expedition, there's the expedition where it carried out by the British when they were going to Ethiopia. They, 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 they kill um, the king called Tuojos II, who was the, the emperor of Ethiopia at the time, because they kidnapped some British missionaries. See? So due to the help of Emperor Ioannis IV, as most people might know him, him did lead the British them towards which part Tuojos II did they open at the mountain, because him did want to become the emperor of Ethiopia. See? And during that now, so in theme agreement with the British them was that them was a come in, so come in kill two just a second. So him, so you want is the fourth could have become the new emperor of Ethiopia and become the king of kings, right? While them them take the orders of 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 of, of um you want is the fourth and him them follow the passage with him and him lead them towards towards just a second. When them murder towards just a second, them steal 
some of the most valuable scrolls, manuscripts, crowns, all of these particular treasures, some of the most valuable treasures where Ethiopia ever have were stolen by the British. And that was stolen in the way that come to known as a Napier expedition because General Napier was the general who, the English general who did lead out that. So you see, I'll, and then in the 1960s now, in, in the 1960s now, Queen Elizabeth being the politician who she is, um, returned like the royal cap and the royal seal to Isla Selassie as a symbol. But they never tell us that the biggest, one of the next biggest crowns were owned by the British royal family were taken out of the Napier expedition and taken out of the Napier expedition by these same people and Queen Elizabeth II was one of them who channeled and who that ownership of that particular crown was given to. You see me I say? And then if we want to think about now, again, the man name still talk about this Eilis Lassie exile thing where Queen Elizabeth play a role in her. No, that was just, that was in the interest, the, the interest of Ethiopia is always in the view of England because if we really check history from a longer time, Ethiopia is a very important nation towards um, England because when England did a conquer Egypt, England did use Ethiopia for make one of the wars then with, e with, with Egypt so they could have helped them to carry the passage through the Nile and then go conquer Egypt. So Ethiopia played a role from that time. So may I say, and even within the time when, when, when Italy did a try, try to conquer Ethiopia and them help Isla Selassie by making him go in exile. That was all in the interest of theirs because even afterwards, when him get returned to the capital of Addis Ababa on May 5th, I think 1941, after the five years up, seeing them, the British were controlling the finances of Ethiopia. And after that, Isla Selassie I make two speeches where him try to rewrite that whole constitution of Ethiopia to try to go against that controlling of the finances. Because the man them control finances, they were trying to control the full-blown trade of Ethiopia. So the interests of, of, of Ethiopia by the British were not out of goodwill. And if you, if you recall good, they were telling Ethiopia that they cannot do anything about it. But oh, all of a sudden, when World War II, the brink of World War II both happened, and them see what Germany do, them use, that, them use Ethiopia as a political pawn. So while all of these false clowns who are ignorant and attack try to claim Rastafari, right? know this fire. If you support an oppressor in a, that particular farm, and I try to tell me so that oppressor did give, just because that oppressor did supposedly give passage towards Isla Selassie, you know, I, I say that person become a good person due to that particular fact. That simply means you're ignorant and you don't overstand nothing for you because as Rastafari, we know one thing. We say death to the, death to the oppressor, black and white oppressor. Now you're being gay. Vibrations. So that simply means that you now stand for what is the thing. And Rastafari is an anti-oppression movement. So you can't support an oppressor. I mentally, I dare them just need to start research some things and stop support them type of murderous people. Because it's almost like said, this royal family become a celebrity for murder. I tell you that. They become celebrities for murder. And then last piece I want to add towards that, if they are them still not believe not what we are saying, one day them go look today and research. It's one last thing I make tell you that. But the Tower of London, it's there. The Tower of London exists to this day. The Tower of London is where all of these crowns, all of these diamonds, and it's heavily guarded with securities today. And it is there. And there is information on every single artifact that them steal and it's in the Tower of London and the information is there on some of these particular things. So if you don't believe me, more there then go check it and check out the, 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 the connection to all of what we said before fire to see how these people really are, you know? Well, let me hear you say my